right, folks, thanks for joining us again on Modern Horror's 31 Days of Halloween. Wes Craven Week continues with Carnival of Souls, the remake in name only produced by Wes Craven. It was a remake? It, in fact, was a remake. Oh, my God. Of a, an old, I think it was a black and white movie. They had the oh, same yeah. basic twist at the end, but everything else was different. Was it bad? We should watch it. Okay. All right, so Carnival of Souls is about some... Girl. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out the right word to use here. Some girl. Yeah, so some Car chick. So Carnival of Souls is about a young girl who witnesses her mother's clown boyfriend uh, attempting to rape and then killing her before she runs off and gets him convicted uh, of, of the crime and he gets sent to jail for several decades, at which point the girl and her sister grow up and become the owners of their mom's bar in this kind of carnival towny town until such time as the guy gets out of prison and he comes back and he stows away in our main character's uh, backseat of her car and tries to kidnap her but she drives her car off the pier and and crashes it on purpose and it's implied that he has died and she has survived and she starts having these really strange dreams and hallucinations where he's appearing to her as a hallucination and maybe she's being haunted like a ghost and just crazy shit is going on. There's some interpersonal tension between her and her sister. There's also a dude. Oh yeah, random pretty boy lover dude. I don't know. He was come. Yeah. The thing about the plot of this movie is that most of it is incredibly superfluous. The whole thing just goes by, and it's a bunch of increasingly strange situations and hallucinations until such time as it gets to the end and they reveal that the whole thing was actually just her death hallucination. She crashed the car at the beginning and then they both died. Wrong turn did it better. What I liked about this movie was the synopsis that I read before I saw the movie. I was expecting a clown <laughs> to be raping her mom and it was just some dude and I'm like I guess he kind of looks like a clown because he's wearing 1980s clothes but no. He wasn't a clown until, like, a flashback scene 20 minutes later. Uh, alright, so, well, that's something bad. Okay, something good. Something good to say about this movie. I really like the faceless eyeless guys that would just show up randomly and go, Bleh! I think they were supposed to be balloons. I don't care. They just showed up, they like, show up, and I'm just like, Jesus, that'll be in my nightmares. But I forgot about them. It's like, here, have, like, five or six frames of a Silent Hill monster. Yeah, it was great! Um, the underwater scenes were pretty nice. There's a lot of underwater scenes because she was spending, she was drowning the whole movie and they were all very nice. So there, I said something nice about the movie. What'd you like? <laughs> yeah, so some of the hallucinations and the dream sequences that she has are kind of cool. Um, but yeah, they're not really enough to make up for the story being quite as meandering and pointless as it is. Things I didn't like about the movie. <laughs> Most of the movie? Most of the movie. Um, I didn't... I... I just couldn't stay focused. I didn't know uh, who was what when the pretty boy showed up. I was like, who's this character? Like, I felt like, oh, they say that in uh, The Room. Like, she just walks in and goes, who are these characters? And it's just like, that's how I felt. Um, I couldn't recognize the sister half the time because I, I wasn't, again, I wasn't really paying attention, so that's my fault. But Shawnee Smith, man. But I think the worst part about it is I really didn't like the clown character. He wasn't very threatening. And even when he was in clown makeup, he was the shittiest looking clown ever. He had like this blonde bob wig and his clown makeup was mime makeup. And it's like, come on, if you're going to be a clown, go full clown. Just red. And he had like the natural red hair. He could have just used that. Why did they put him in a wig? This is just like, it's a shitty wig. I, I was really disappointed and he'd just show up and just be like your vaguely creepy uncle priest. <laughs> and you're just like, I'm not gonna hang out with you anymore, bye. And that was it. He wasn't really threatening, except when he was raping the mom, then he was very scary. Mm. All right, you really want me to see what I didn't like about the movie? I really didn't like most of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> the acting wasn't great, the story wasn't great, the direction was fairly unimaginative, the carnival was very superfluous, it didn't really have any effect on it at all. It was just a bunch of crazy hallucination shit as the, the main character died. The only really good part was the, the surprise shockers with the creepy monsters and you know, they hit their balloon motif pretty well and 
it's the cop-out ending. It's the worst ending you can have to anything. It was just all a dream. Dying dream. Well, yeah, I mean, but that's why she had Lover Boy. If you're gonna have a fantasy, might as well get some tail. So do we recommend The Afterlife Adventures of Touchy Feely the Clown? I don't think so. Alright, folks, thanks for joining us on Modern Horror's 31 Days of Halloween. This one was a bit of a bust, but let's see if we can do better with the close of Wes Craven Week. Wishmaster. Cheers, folks. Spooky, scary skeletons Speak with such a screech You'll shake and shudder